We're going to start with this issue of trans uh, individuals in sport. This has been something that's been ongoing for a long, long time now. Is this third category idea the best solution and should it be rolled out across the board? Well, it's one option which uh, federations can adopt. And I think the announcement from the World Boxing Council is very good because they've they've made it absolutely clear that sex at birth must be what is used in categories in boxing. And they've said that a man cannot be allowed to fight a woman regardless of gender change. Um, but they've also made a positive and proactive step to be welcoming and inclusive to transgender people who want to participate in boxing. Uh, by saying they will set up this new category. Um, the other option, which is essentially what what FINA, the, the swimming federation, have kind of done, is to have a male and an, uh, sorry, a female and an open category. Uh, so different sports have to decide, you know, what is best for them. Female and open, I think, is a very good option. But I think what the World Boxing Council have done um, is also good, and it will be very interesting to see how much uh, interest there will be in this new transgender category. I mean, of course, a lot of trans activists uh, may object to this. I mean, their view is that trans women are women and trans men are men. So by creating a third category, you're essentially denying uh, that viewpoint. What, what would you make of that? Well, trans women are not women. Women are adult human females. Trans women, by definition, are males. Otherwise, they wouldn't be trans. And sport is about bodies, sexed bodies. There are two sexes, male and female. You cannot change your sex. So people, people who participate in sport are welcome to identify in whatever way they wish. But your sex at birth, male or female, is what determines your physical capacities. And as we all know, males have massive physical advantages compared to females. So trans people must be welcome and included in sport, but that cannot come under any circumstances at the expense of safety and fairness for females. A lot of people make the case that if you're taking hormones, if you're, if you're adapting your testosterone levels, then this in itself uh, flattens out the, any advantage that you would otherwise have. Do you think that's a credible view? No, there are about 16 uh, peer-reviewed scientific research papers out now which demonstrate that testosterone suppression in an adult male does not remove the, the massive male advantages compared to females. Some of them, uh, testosterone suppression does remove some of the advantages a little bit, but unless 100% is removed, we cannot even begin to have the conversation about is it fair or not. So it is up, and, and those, the results of those papers is what we would expect because the circulating testosterone levels in an adult male is not what gives males their advantages. What gives males their advantages is having undergone testosterone fueled male puberty over a number of years. And once that process is concluded, those advantages cannot be undone. Those advantages in boxing, punching power, males have one, about 162% greater punching power than females. This is the biggest difference uh, in males and females. If we look at like running speed, swimming, etc., it's the biggest difference. And therefore, it's absolutely clear that boxing must be divided by sex. I mean, when you mention this, it just sounds like a complete no brainer. And I'm sure the vast majority of people would be thinking, well, why on earth would you would you consider someone being who was born male uh, competing against a woman in the boxing ring? And yet there seems to be a great weight of support for this kind of thing. I note today there was an article in The Scientific American saying that there's no justification scientifically uh, to, to keep uh, people apart uh, and that gender identity should be the determination factor. Well, if you've got the top, uh, these medical journals saying this, where is this coming from? Why is there this kind of, uh, this view being disseminated? Well, I think this must be an example of institutional capture. You know, we've seen august major organizations from the Lancet to the NHS to the ACLU in the USA, political parties being captured by activists who push gender identity ideology. And we have to resist this because in sport, which is my area of expertise, what they are pushing for is the end of women's sport. We cannot but beat about the bush here. If you say, let's get rid of sex categories, women will not feature in sport at all. And if that's what they want, that they're entitled to hold that view. Obviously, I don't agree. 
but they need to be upfront about it and say, we believe females should not participate in sport. This is what people need to understand. But a lot of people like yourself and, and Martina Navratilova and Sharon Davis, uh, female athletes who speak up about this kind of thing and, and, and make the statements that you're making, which are so clearly uh, the, the case and so clearly credible, you, you get a lot of abuse and people attack you for it. And it's, it's quite intimidating, isn't it, actually, to make this point that the vast majority of people agree with. Yes, it's not pleasant to get abuse. And, you know, fellow female athletes like Sharon Davis, Martina Navratilova have received a lot of abuse. Um, but this is about the future of women's sport. And, you know, without categories by sex at birth, women's sport will disappear. It is already disappearing. I know of female distance runners in the UK who deliberately avoid female competitions because they know a male will be present there. You know, and we've seen a horrific injury in volleyball in the USA recently, same in ice hockey. You know, in boxing, a female would be severely injured or probably killed if they were put in the ring with a male fighter. So this is about the future of women's sport. And what I would say to people who are keeping their heads down is you need to speak up. You need to find some courage because it's very obvious in sport. Sport is done by bodies, not by beliefs or identities or feelings or anything like that. And the vast majority of the general public support women's sport being female only. When I look at uh, replies to tweets by people like Dr. Emma Hilton, Dr. John Pike, Kathy Devine, Dr. Ross Tucker, the vast majority of replies are agreeing with them that women's sport must be female only. And, you know, trans people must be welcome in sport. No question. I'm not saying they shouldn't be allowed in sport. Therefore, the federations must come up with uh, welcoming and inclusive ways to include them without, um, you know, without getting rid of safety and fairness for females. Well, Mariamuchi, thanks ever so much for coming on and making that case to us. Really appreciate it.